Pete and I've got a super fun one for you guys today because after questions every single day of where all of my models come from, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of my space toys without Pete. <laughs> So we're gonna start with everybody's favorite, which is the Saturn V that usually sits in the background of my videos. This is a uh, 100 and, uh, 144 scale model of the Saturn V. Um, it's just a Revel kit that I got, actually my ex got for me on Amazon. I think it was about $25, so definitely a, a gettable one and also a scale level two, so you don't have to be very good at modeling to put it together, which is probably good because I didn't know what I was doing when I started this. Um, it does come apart to show the stages, however, uh, mine doesn't anymore because I broke it so many times that I had to actually glue it together. So this is a really great model if you want something to kind of show what the stages just look like and all that fun stuff um, and also paint it yourself I as you can see oh my god it's gonna fall apart uh, painted like the Saturn 500 F because that is what the uh, instructions came with weirdly but um great kind of st I want to call it like a starter Saturn 5 but Revel uh, you can get it on Amazon and I will try to put as many links to these things if I can find them uh, in the description below another oh <laughs> another one that's a little bit a little bit delicate to deal with that you guys have also seen me use quite a bit is this uh, I think it's 1 to 72 scale. I don't have the box anymore, so I can't actually check. Uh, command service module with lunar adapter section and uh, launch escape tower. So this one is from another Revel model kit. Um, and I actually, I really like this one. It's a little bit more robust than the Saturn V. Um, also, I think like a skill level two. So again, you don't have to be like expert modeler and have like an affinity for finicky details to build this one and have it look good. And my favorite thing about this one is it actually opens up so you can see what the innards of this the service module looked like and um, I think this does come off but I think I actually might have sticky tacked it on at some point in a move can't totally see it but there are actually three teeny tiny astronauts in there that I did paint one of them does have the commander stripes and it came with the matching lunar module which is also 172 scale I believe so this is this is another you know also the rebel uh, level two build this is the little moon set that I you know should probably put more detail into. Um, but I, I, again, you guys have seen this one. I really like that the, the ascent stage actually comes off the descent stage, which is great for like illustrating what actually happens on a lunar mission. Um, you can't totally see it because it's really hard to see, but there is actually an astronaut standing up in the commander's position ready to land on the moon. So that's kind of fun. And the legs, the legs do fold up rather gingerly at this point because it's been broken, but uh, you can put it in the launch adapter section of that giant, uh, the, the piece that goes under the command module, the command service module, so that's kind of fun. Um, and the little porch, the little ladder. So this is the lunar module I use when discussing how the two spacecraft come together as one or work together on a mission. These are great models and I absolutely love them. Another one that you guys have seen a fair bit of is my model uh, X-15, which I believe is 148 scale. No, no, you know what it is? This is 172 scale and the command service and lunar modules are 148 scale. Sorry, I, got, I always get those ones backward because for some reason in my head I thought they were the same, but there's no way that this pilot is uh, the right size to fit into those models. Um, so this is a 172 scale uh, X-15. It's another Revel kit and it did come with a B-52 that I've painted but haven't actually built yet. So here's half of the B-52 so you get a sense, you get a sense of sort of how big the mothership was compared to the tiny plane that it launched. I will eventually finished building this um, but Pete really likes to eat paint so I actually now that I think about it I haven't built a model since I got my kitten who is now a cat okay now we get into the kind of obscure models I got this Apollo recovery playset at the um, gift shop at the Naval Academy in uh, Annapolis, Maryland. Um, I went to the graduation ceremony there in 2010 and obviously uh, Al Shepard's Freedom 7 capsule is there because he of course graduated from Annapolis. It comes with the helicopter as well as the uh, the spacecraft. It's so funny, the helicopter being the Navy bit is the like the nice metal die cast thing and then the Apollo capsule is plastic uh, with the balloons inflated so it's at the stable position, uh, the stable one position. The kit also comes with a communication van and there's no one actually in the van right now uh, but the, you know the, the man who would be theoretically in the van would be be reporting on the bang up job that the Navy is doing and recovering the Apollo astronauts after a mission. I love this one. This is so great. It's so obscure. It's brilliant. 
All right, these are another two that I've used in videos a lot and a lot of people ask about because they are really, really nice models. Um, this is the, obviously, the Gemini and the Mercury, and I forget what the scale is on these, but these these two are to scale with one another. You can kind of get a sense that it's they are to scale. Um, I got these at the gift shop, one of the gift shops at the Kennedy Space Center. They're like nice quality ones. I really do like these, and they weren't super expensive. I feel like they were maybe 25 a piece. Um, I kind of love them. The Mercury Escape Cap Tower does come off, so if you ever want to demonstrate what that looks like, you, you can. So then in the category of build them yourselves, except that I didn't actually build them myself, uh, we've got these Metal Earth models. Um, I've had friends who've built these for me, which is so wonderful because I don't have the patience to sit there with teeny tiny tools and build a piece of, of metal into something as complicated as a lunar module. There is a Mer rover, uh, either Spirit or Opportunity, or you could get two and then have both. And you can actually get every shuttle orbiter. All right, so now we're on to the category that I call the purse model collection. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you will know that I pretty much never leave the house without space toys and usually take pictures of them on my travels. Up first, we've got the Mars Pathfinder set, and it starts with the spacecraft as it was as it entered the Martian atmosphere. So here's the aero shell and the, the, the back piece. Uh, this does actually come apart, and inside it is a teeny tiny version of the, uh, the payload with the airbags that actually unfolds. There is also a bigger version of the lander with all the pedals unfold, and the teeny tiny Sojourner rover actually does pop off, and you can kind of rove it around away from the from the uh, from the lander if you uh, get bored in public somewhere. And of course, it comes with a larger version of the Sojourner rover, which you guys might know is my favorite rover because I love I love the early early technologies. This Mars Pathfinder set, uh, it's a Hot Wheels set. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, they're not the easiest to find. I think mine was about thirty dollars, and I do I do have one that's unopened. Um, but you can actually find these still. Up next, we've got possibly my favorite thing that exists, which is the John Glenn action set. It's another Hot Wheels set, and I just think it's so funny that this really exists. So the first one, we've got um, we've got a Mercury capsule and a little Mercury era John Glenn in his silver spacesuit. And it's a little bit weird to have these two things together because there is another John Glenn in the cockpit. And then, of course, not to leave out John Glenn's later career, there is the Senator John Glenn model. And then the final stage of his space career, we have. Uh, shuttle astronaut John Glenn with a space shuttle. I love that you can have all three John Glenns in a row. I just love having a little set of John Glenns. All right, and now my all-time favorite model, because you guys have definitely seen pictures of this on the internet. It's the Apollo purse model. Um, I got this for Christmas um, maybe four years ago, a little over four years ago now. Um, it's just a plastic one. It came with a Saturn V that's not to scale. Obviously, that would be a bigger than the, the two-foot one that I showed you guys earlier. Actually, um, it came with a lunar rover astronaut as well. But I always forget I have. He shows up in weird places. Check gift shops for these kinds of things. Um, but I love this one because it all comes apart. So you can start with it as the mission you know, was when it got to the moon. You can separate the two spacecraft. The little legs on the lander pop out, and then you can make it land, and then you can bring the ascent stage up, and then the ascent stage can redock with the, with the command service module, and then that can go away, and then that can go away, and then this re-enters the atmosphere, and and the piece de resistance in this. There are three, you guys can't see it, but there's three teeny tiny astronauts inside. It's kind of amazing. So this is the one that I bring I bring with me pretty much everywhere. So yeah, I would, I would recommend you guys invest very little money in a solid model that will just schlep around the world with you. All right, so I hope that answers all the questions about where all my models came from. Uh, like I said, I'll put as many links to the products if I can find them in the description below. Um, and if you guys have other questions about where to get good models, um, I can try to answer them for you. Um, Real Space Models has a lot of really phenomenal things. They're a little bit higher skill level to build them from what I understand. Uh, that's just the one off the top of my head. No one's paying me to say any of this. I just, I've been kind of looking around and I like those ones. Um, and if you guys have favorite models, let me know, what kits do you like to build? Where do you get your favorite models? What are the ones that you're kind of lusting after that are like so great but so expensive that it's sort of hard to justify if you're not a billionaire to have this like $500 beautiful, you know, lunar module on a base with a real gold foil around the bottom? Um, let me know. And of course, if you guys have questions or comments or other weird little insights into uh, the things that I, that I have that you want to know about, I know a lot of you guys have asked about books. Leave all those questions in the comments section below. Um, definitely be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily vintage space updates and also do check out my Facebook page. Um, I'll have a link to that below. I've been putting up a lot of social videos that I feel like you guys would probably really like. Um, and of course, with a new video going up at least every Friday and sometimes on Tuesdays, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.